when you think about our culture today, uh, and I'm not just talking about the Orlando shooting, I'm not just talking about the Louisiana shooting, I'm not just talking about what happened in France, I'm not talking about all these different things. You do realize every day we turn on the TV, there's somebody that's losing their mind, someone's blowing themselves up, blowing other people up, everybody out there is going crazy. Uh, our world is racked with AIDS and rape and government corruption, drive-by shootings, gangs, drug addiction, alcoholism, pornography, and on and on and on the list goes. If you think about even our school system, I don't know if you guys go to public or private or where you go, but basically prayer is out of schools, the Ten Commandments have been thrown out, there are now denominations that are ordaining, practicing homosexuals, basically our nation is going the wrong way. And so now more than ever, every single one of you have got to understand that your relationship with Jesus Christ is so important. Amen. And I'm going to ask everybody to look me dead in the eye right now for just a second. Everybody look straight at me. Uh, I'm going to talk with you guys for about 30 minutes or so tonight, and I'm going to ask you to get your attention. Because I want to say this, I hope it's okay, but I see a lot of disrespect in the attention that you guys are giving Misty. Amen. I see a lot of disrespect in the attention that you guys are giving the leaders. Amen. And I want to I want you to know that I did this and came here as a personal favor to Misty. Yes. And I think the very least you could do is give them your respect. Amen. And so I'm going to just talk to you guys for a few minutes. I was in, in just the last five weeks, I've been in North Carolina, Mississippi, Seattle, Florida, Washington, D.C., uh, I was in Texas uh, Sunday. I'm here with you guys last night, tonight, tomorrow night. I'll be in Montana Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in New York City all of next week. So understand, I didn't have to come here. Yes. I, I, we travel all over the world, 50 weekends uh, a year. We've been to 47 out of 50 states, 5 out of 7 continents. I didn't have to come to Georgia and hang out with you guys. But I felt in my heart of hearts that I was supposed to be here. I felt like when Misty reached out to me, I felt the Holy Spirit tell me that I was supposed to be here. So I'm going to ask you guys to take your, your maturity level up a couple of notches and not just be jacking around with your wristband or tapping each other on the shoulder or talking or giggling or looking up at the ceiling. I'm going to talk to you for about 30 minutes and I'm going to talk about your life because there's probably not a more important subject that I could talk about tonight than your life. There's a scripture in James that says your life is a mist. It appears for a little while and then vanishes. There's a lot of different things that I think I could talk about tonight, but there's probably not a more important subject that I could talk about than your life. Because your life, the Bible says, is a mist. Matter of fact, the, the scripture goes on to say, now you who say uh, today or tomorrow we're going to go to this or that city, we're going to spend some money, we're going to do some business there, and then we'll come home. It says, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? Say that with me. What, what is, is your life? life? The Bible says you're a mist that appears and then it's gone. Then the scripture says, as it is, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. Then the scripture ends by saying, as it is, you boast and you brag. All such boasting is evil. Anyone then who knows the good that he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. How many of you, be honest, how many of you have known in your life times where you should have done something good, you should have done the right thing, and you didn't, you didn't do it? Raise your hand. That's everybody. So the Bible says you're a sinner. Because the Bible says anyone who knows the good that he ought to do and doesn't do it, the Bible says that person is a sinner. The Bible says we're all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And so even on our best day, students, you're not good enough. We can't be good enough. We can't attend church enough. We can't give enough. We can't pray enough. We can't read our Bible enough. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. We can never earn the goodness of God. We can never earn the graciousness of God. It's only because He loves you so much that you have the very freedom to even sit here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. You do understand if God moved His foot, He could smash this whole universe. Yeah. The Bible says the world is his footstool. Do you understand young people while you're doing your little games or while you're doing your little Facebook or your Twitter or your Instagram or your Snapchat? The Bible says that he's omniscient. He knows everything. He's omnipotent. He's all powerful. He's all that present. He can be anywhere he wants to be in the entire universe. He's God. And he deserves our praise and our honor and our respect. And so when Amen. we come to the house of God and everything else in our lives is more important than God, you've got a messed up priority. Amen. And so I'm going to ask all of you to, to ask yourself that question. What, what, what is my life right now in Christ? 
on a scale of 1 to 10. I mean, uh, if I were to say, do you love Jesus? You'd all just unanimously raise your hands. But do you really? Is he the most important thing in your life? Is he the driving Amen. force behind your life? Is he the yeah. most important thing in your day to day? Or is the relationship more important? Or is money more important? Yeah. Or is this or that more important? Because the Bible says that whatever is first place, that's what takes your attention and that's what takes your heart. Matter of fact, more of you in this room probably know more about the Kardashians than you do about the Ten Commandments. More of you in this room probably know more about the Pokemon game than you do about the Bible. More of you in this room probably know more celebrities and rappers and singers than, and pop stars than you do the 12 disciples. And so I'm asking you, what in your life is important? What drives you? What makes you want to get up every day and say, man, my life belongs to Jesus Christ? Because the Bible says that many will say on that day, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils? Didn't we do all these amazing things in your name? And the Bible says he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. You do understand that one day we'll all stand before God. Yes. And what are you going to say? Are you going to say, well, you know, I mean, I was really, I was trying to be serious about you, Lord, but, you know, it was just my friends and we were all just messing around and you know, we were just trying to have a good time. And, you know, I just was trying to get them up to, I mean, Honestly, and I mean this in all sincerity, there you guys are probably more concerned with how many likes you get on a selfie than you are about the Bible. Hallelujah. And so I'm going to ask you tonight to really start to prioritize your life. Amen. Because we are living in the last days. Yes. I believe yes. now more than ever it, 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 Jesus is coming again. I heard it my whole life. But I truly believe now more than ever that he is coming again. And there are three categories of people in this room. I believe there's at least one person representing each of these categories right now. There's three categories. Number one, there's those of you that have chose to live without God. There are some of you in this room right now, I believe, that don't have a relationship with God. I'm not saying you don't love him. I'm not saying that you don't know about him. I'm saying that I believe that there's somebody in here tonight and you're representing that person that doesn't doesn't have Jesus in their life. I believe that there's a second category in here, and that's those that have chosen to live in the middle of the road. I believe that there's some of you in here, and you're not really in, you're not really out. I mean, you love Jesus, and you're saved, and you go to church, but you're still running after things in the world. So you're just kind of in the middle, on the fence. There's some of you in here tonight. And then there's a third category, and I believe that you're here tonight, too. There's some of you in here, and you chose to live your life for God, and I commend you for that. So the first one I want to talk about tonight are those that chose to live without, live without God. How you think you could successfully live your life without Jesus Christ is absolutely beyond me. It just blows my mind, Misty, that anybody in our culture today or any of you young people think that you can live your life without Jesus Christ. Did you know back in the 1960s, you weren't born, I was barely born. But in the 1960s, let me tell you guys the three greatest influences on a teenager. Are you ready for this? Church, home, and school. Man, have we come a long way from that. Amen. Now the average teenager, by the time they graduate high school, will have estimated to watch over 31,000 hours of television, YouTube, and Netflix while only going to church about once a week and complaining about some of that. Suddenly, our culture has given all of us a quick fix center. And I want to tell every one of you students something. I mean this in all sincerity. There is no greater portrayer of fantasy than television. Can I say that again? There's no greater portrayer of fantasy than television. Television is fantasy. And I mean this. How many of you have seen the McDonald's commercials? Raise your hand seen the McDonald's commercials. Now, I want to tell you that McDonald's commercial is fantasy. The burger does not look like that. I don't know if you've ever been to the yeah. drive room, but <laughs> That's that right. the burger that you get is not the burger on the commercial. That's you know, right. The they show you the burger, and it's rotating, and the camera's swooping around it, and there's all these, like, meticulously sesame seed buns, and it's all, it's perfect. Have you ever seen the one that you get in the drive room? looks like they just stamped on it. That's what it looks like. That's reality. Uh, you know, when you when you look at the reality shows, look at the reality shows. Everybody's pretty. Everybody, all the guys are handsome. All the girls are gorgeous. Look at the soap operas. Even the grandmas are fine. That's not reality. I mean, come on, my grandma's not pretty. She's she's rather 
Okay, she's a hippo. Anyway, that's my grandma. <laughs> so you got to look at all the color. Look at every single commercial. Look at uh, you know the deodorant. They say, put on this deodorant. It'll last 48 hours. Why would you even want deodorant to last 48 hours? Take a shower. Can you get an amen? I mean, come on. I, I don't need it to last 48 hours. Then uh, you look at every single thing on television. You look at uh, look at the E-Trade baby. Babies don't talk. They certainly don't share stocks. And you got the Aflac duck. Ducks don't talk. The Geico lizard. The lizards don't talk. They don't sell insurance. That's fantasy. Okay? And so when you look all the time at our culture, they, 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 they show you the sex. They show you the relationships. They never show you reality. You know what the reality is? Reality is syphilis and chlamydia and herpes and gonorrhea and genital warts and AIDS and unwanted pregnancy. That's reality. And so we live in a culture that says, hey, you can sleep with whoever you want to. You can date whoever you want to. You can jump in and out of bed with one another. There's never any consequences to pay. They don't show you the harsh reality out there that is if you partake in sin, you will reap the consequences.